hearing for each project, the applicant is to submit proof of notification to abutters within 200 feet of the subject property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are. So, oh, just before you go into that, um, just for the record, um, Eric Gaspar missed the last meeting. He has watched it and he has a, a completed Mullins form for all of the continued public hearings tonight. All right. <coughs> okay. Good point. We are now at 6.05 p.m. We, public hearing for 231 to 237 Cedar Street. Notice of intent work, uh, NOI work to, be, uh, to complete a wetland replication and driveway uh, cross culvert installations, DEP file number, and we don't have a file number yet. It came in today. It's 300-1107. Um, 1107. 1107. Thank you. All right. Becky, you want to? Um, so we have um, the representative Paul McManus from Ecotech um, online here. I believe we have the, the property owners here too. Paul, do you want to start this off? Sure. Thank you again, Paul. Uh, Paul McManus from Ecotech. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, as, as the commission will recall, this um, uh, we delineated the wetlands on this property a little while back. Um, Jalbert Engineering submitted an ANRAD, uh, which the commission opened a hearing for, reviewed. Uh, during that process, uh, uh, staff kind of dug into the old files realized that there was uh, actually a superseding order of conditions on the property to build some driveways that required um, some uh, cross culverts be installed and also some uh, bordering vegetative wetland uh, replication areas. Uh, as it turns out, the cross culverts and the replication area um, was not installed so uh, after the discussion with the commission, it was, it was agreed that uh, the ANRAD would be kind of put on the back burner and the commission requested and, and uh, at the owner's request, we did file a notice of intent to do the um, kind of the missing mitigation from uh, those driveway uh, installations. The driveways were put in, uh, but as I said, the cross culverts and the replication um, were not put in. So uh, we're basically the NOI that's before you is really to um, to bring the uh, uh, bring the site into compliance with that uh, old or superseding order conditions. Um, I should tell you, I did speak with Kim Roth at DEP about this. She was trying to make sure she understood what was going on, and you know, uh, with regard to issuing a file number, um, she asked me, uh, and I agreed that. Um, we would request a uh, partial certificate of compliance uh, in the short term, uh, partial certificate of compliance with respect to the old superseding order, um, and then um, ultimately a, um, a full certificate of compliance when the commission's uh, order is issued. Essentially, that, that, um, that certificate of compliance for the uh, superseding order would state that the obligations have now rolled into uh, the new, uh, I guess, file number 1107. Um, so that was uh, that was my discussion uh, with DEP. Uh, I agreed to, to do that, and um, so that's that's kind of a procedural issue. In terms of on the ground, you may recall uh, those of you that were at the site visit. Um, there. The uh, SOC plan showed two BVW replication areas. Um, one of those is problematic because my delineation um, and you know recent delineation is more expansive in that area and essentially already includes that area of replication. Um, and then further up, further outside of that, you're really starting to run up the hill towards Cedar Street. So what I've proposed is to do. Uh, to do the total replication on the uh, at the at the southerly area, the southerly replication area. 
I think it's a much better place to do the replication. It's not on the hill, requires minimal excavation. Um, I'm quite confident we can we can get in there and and get good wetland hydrology without creating a major excavation. Um, so so that's the other one I describes that. I'm happy to go into the details, but we have a protocol um, for you know excavation, inspect the subgrade, bring in the topsoil, uh, and then we specify uh, a planting program to uh, for that replication. So. With regard to the cross culverts, um, talk to Jalbert Engineering about that, um, and um, they they agreed that uh, 12 inch ADS pipes uh, would be appropriate uh, to put in there. They can be installed shallow to um, and 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 support uh, you know vehicular traffic uh, over them. So um, the proposal is is to do that. Um, again, there's really no grade. Uh, through the area, the, the pipes were just kind of equalizer pipes proposed. Um, so that's, uh, that's again specified uh, in the NOI. So um, that's really it. I'm happy to answer questions or go into whatever detail uh, you might want. Thank you. Becky, you want to? Okay. So I mean, I had some notes on the, the filing and the detailed agenda. Um, like I said, DEP did issue the file number today and I did print that. Um, which does include their comments, and they did call today too, so I spoke to her as well um, about that. Um, some of the things that they had noted on here is that the plan lacks elevation data. Please revise and include elevations for existing conditions and proposed replication areas as well as for the um, culvert in inverts. Um, and culverts should take care not to alter existing hydrology. Um, Paul, is that something that um, we can have revised and add on there? Do you see any concerns? Because well. I mean, we, we could, but the, 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 I'm always reluctant to put, um, you know, specific grades at the replication area because basically what our protocol says is that, you know, we're going to go out there um, and, and look at the subgrade and, and basically evaluate it um, on the ground. Uh, you know, look at the soils features, figure out, you know, figure out uh, on the ground really where we need to be. Um, because you know we can we can make a prediction about that relative you know from from standing, but but even if we even if we were to do that, frankly, I would want I would want the plan to show you know subject to field uh, subject to field adjustment based upon observed conditions. So um, I, um, I I I I guess frankly I don't I don't see the value in in Doing you know putting now. an elevation on there because because it's you know. In my, I feel very strongly that it should be a field call. Um, with respect to the, with respect to the culverts, um, again, I, I, it's, it's uh, a little bit of the same, same issue because, um, as I said, these are, these are kind of just culverts that, in the event that there's, you know, there's a lot of water, uh, and, and, you know, the wants to be uh, equalized through the, through the driveways. Um, they're basically proposed at the at the low point, you know, find the localized low point at the driveway, um, working around existing trees. As you remember, there was some big maples, you know, pretty close to the edge of those driveways. Um, so again, we, we call for somewhat similar, really, in that um, it would be a field call. It would be put to match existing grade um, and um, you know, and then just get them just just to be bare, just barely below the uh, the surface of those driveways, which are not filled very high. So, again, I mean, we could do that. Um, you know, I'd I'd love to be able to to if we could to to get this closed so that uh, the owners could go. They've they've spoken to contractors um, and and are are anxious to get this going. Um, it, I, I would I would hate to have uh, I'd hate to miss this this fall as an opportunity to to get this uh, replication area in the ground, um, and, you know, and 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 then and thus miss you know have to put it in next year and and miss a big chunk of next year's growing season. So, um, okay, you know, again, I, I think those are I think I think it's perfectly appropriate to have those those two things really be field calls. Okay. And right, that's something that the commission can take into consideration with this situation. I think it would be necessary 
that um, qualified professional like Paul or another wetland scientist is on site, obviously overseeing the replication area, but giving guidance to the contractor on the installation of the pipe, especially because um, this is noted as a just um, buffer zone project, and we know the edge of the wetlands are, are close to the driveway, so we want to make sure that, it, that we don't have any um, unintended wetland impact associated with putting the pipe in or the fill for the driveway. So I think that provided that someone was there providing that guidance to make sure it was being done um, as intended, that's something that you can consider. Um, it would be necessary that when it's done, that it's, it's field located and showed on the plan um, for any future purposes. Um, as far as DP's additional comments, and they said if a stream channel is present, which I don't think that we have any stream channel present in there, um, applicants should describe how the culverts meet performance standards for stream crossings. And then they also note that there um, might be a 401 water quality certification requirement. Um, so Paul, I would ask that you, you look into that, and that's something that could be, I would think, added as a con condition in the permit. Uh, yeah, I will. I will follow up on that. Um, I haven't actually I talked to Kim. I just just got back home just a few minutes ago, so I haven't even seen the, the uh, file number sheet. Yeah, it just came in at about quarter of five, so it, it was it was late coming in. Oh, the only other thing um, is that um, I would just ask since you're here, Michael, just to sign the notice of intent application. It just didn't include um, applicant property owner signature. So if you, don't, if you don't mind, we can have that. For the record, and then I printed an extra DEP file number thing. I think they emailed it to you too, but just in case you wanted that. So um, with that, right, we have the file number now. I think you can add some conditions. Um, it would be nice to see the replication work get done this year. Um, and considering we don't have another meeting for five weeks, with that, um, as I added in the, the notes here, obviously the oversight that I had talked about, um, submission of the as-built plan. Um, now seeing the water quality cert requirement. Uh -huh. Um, and then our typical replication monitoring um, conditions that we have, and then the 75% success of plantings um, after at least two years. So, and, and for the record, we would we would expect um, we would expect all of those conditions. Mr. Barnacle, you want to? What's the source of the water at the present time, Paul? Is it just rain? Did you hear that, Paul? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't get that. What's the source of the wet at the present time? The, the, water the source from? of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, are you asking about the source of hydrology for the replication? Yeah, not, not just the replication. Where's all the water coming from that you need to have a replicated area? Um, well, the, the, uh, the, the culvert, there's there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of water in there. I mean, it's basically, you know, the wetland exists. I think because uh, you know it's it intercepts the it gets you know shallow groundwater in the early part of the growing season. Um, there's a little bit of a slope come down from from uh, from Cedar Street. Um, in, you know, in reality, the those pipes I think would be extremely rare to have any water pass through them. Um, you know, be you know the sort of rain we've got. You know, in in July, perhaps it might be a little bit uh, of water flowing through. I think it would be very rare. Um, there, there are no, there is no real uh, stream channel there um, at, at any of these locations. Um, again, it was just a, a flat, a uh, flat wetland area where the driveways were were cut across, and the original plan called for these cross culverts. Like I said, really as kind of equalizing culverts in the event that uh, that there was a lot of water that you know kind of wanted to move one way or the other the reason I asked the question is because of the recent rainfalls that we've been having which include two inch rainfalls routinely and four inch rainfalls occasionally and I'm wondering what that's going to do to the replication area unless you're planning for replicated plants to be um, waterborne plants or water dependent plants well, as, as I said, the real, the real, the real controlling hydrology for the wetland and, and the replication area would, I would include in this um, is just is just shallow water table, and that's why I say you know we would we would be looking at uh, you know essentially extending the wetland out uh, for our replication area and and you know fixing the fixing the grade of that based upon based upon 
soil evidence of, of where the seasonal seasonal high water table is. So we'd really be, be meeting that. It's it's not, in my opinion, a uh, you know a surface water driven wetland like you sometimes see along a along a stream. Uh, it's 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 really a ground. I'm very confident it's a groundwater situation that we're that we're working with. So you would not feel that you had to put in all obligate species. I'm I'm sorry, Becky. Can you can you repeat that? Your your mic seems to work better for me. <laughs> so he's asking um, if you you don't see the need to just put in obligate species there. No, we've we've got on on our uh, on our planting list. We have um, we have uh, I think focused on kind of fact wet uh, fact wet list of of plant species. Okay, so uh, so you're going to use a lot of fact wet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Becky, say it again. Yeah, he heard you. He said yes. He oh. heard you and said yes. Is your light on, Dave? It is. Okay. Yes, it is. I've got uh, I've got red maple, highbush blueberry, arrowwood, sweet pepper bush, uh, nannyberry, winterberry, silky dogwood, as well as um, uh, as well as the seed mix. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Eric, you want? Uh, I'm just curious could you pull up the plan just so i can see uh, with my eyes where the replication that paul is recommending versus what we had originally talked about i don't have a problem with the change i just can't picture what yeah, he's talking it's not about. noted um it's not noted on the plan the original replication areas are noted on there but you can see where the the two areas would have been and he's saying he'll field locate the the moving of yeah the I, I don't have a problem with going by Paul's professionalism I'm I'm just having problems visualizing yeah, it in my head yeah, yeah. <laughs> glad you asked that because I was gonna have to ask it and look dumb too oh, good all right good. <laughs> and the other thing is to, to satisfy what uh, 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 that uh, DP is asking for would it be a problem with putting the grades on the as built after it's uh, uh, after the project's done? Just I, I understand you're going to want to make some some field recommendations at, at the time, but since they're asking for it, can you put the grade on once the once the project's said and done? Well, I think that's 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 fine because to to Becky's point, you know, we'll we'll, we'll have when it's complete, you know, we'll have to uh, we'll have to demonstrate to the commission. Um, that it meets the, the required size. I forget what the total uh, total square footage is, but um, so there would have to be, you know, there would have to be some, you know, some some detailed delineation of, you know, what we accomplished for replication, and then um, and and that that surveyed and shown on on an as built. So it would uh, it would be certainly reasonable within that to uh, you know to show uh, to show grades. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Paul. Does that work, Eric? I mean, we do have the hard copy here, too. No, that's, it, yeah, no. So so the areas in red are what we're talking about? The, the, area, the two areas in red are, um, are what was shown in the, the original uh, approved superseding order plan. Okay. The, 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 the blue line is my recent wetland delineation. The black line with the with the solid and then three dots, that is yep. the um, that is the wetland delineation from back you know thirty or so years ago. Um, so what what I'm proposing, you'll see on the area on lot seven, um, my my wetland delineation on lot seven is much more expansive than the old one, so that the replication area proposed there is is well within what I've delineated as the current wetland boundary. So my, my proposal is to um, over on, on uh, lot five and then, you know, extending onto lot six is to take the, um, do an area that's, that's essentially the, what is it, 1900 square feet on lot five and add the 600 or so square feet from lot seven onto that uh, bigger area to the left as you're looking at it. Okay, thank you. That that helps. So I just have a. I just have. While we have the plan up, Paul, I forgot to ask it earlier. Um, it did say that excess soil is stated to be placed on lot seven. Can you define where on lot seven 
was it the front bus uh, road or the back portion? Yeah, it'd be right up against the street. Up against the street, up on top? Yeah. In this area? Yep. Steven? Um, I, yeah, I'm okay with doing the field uh, call for the culverts. And um, yeah, I guess I'm okay with moving the replication area too. So um, yeah, I don't have any additional questions. Uh, it would also be good to have this done so that they can get the plants in, give them a chance to make it this year. Yep, right. Yeah, um, well, talk to me a little bit about the, um, the elevation of the driveway. How is that going to change? with? with 12 inch coverts going underneath it. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm a little bit you know, concerned about you know, expanding the width of the driveway into the wetland if, that, if that's what's necessary in order to create this plan. Just tell me about that. Yeah, I'm, 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 not, sure. I'm not sure I heard the full question, but yeah, I heard a request to talk about the, the elevation of the driveway. Um, the, the driveways, as, as, as you saw, are, you know, they're gravel driveways. They're only filled, you know, they, they, were, they were cleared, obviously, and, and, you know, gravel brought in, um, and they're filled, you know, I would say foot, foot and a half above uh, existing grade down at the bottom, less than that up near the, uh, up near the street. Um, and, and that's why I say putting in the, the one foot, um, the one foot uh, ADS uh, cross pipes, you know, they'll be, they'll be, you know, pretty shallow in there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I answered your question. As I said, I'm not totally sure I heard it, but. Yeah, what do you require for clearance over the top of those pipes for a driveway? Uh, I, um, I, I missed that. I'm sorry. Becky, oh, so, um, what is the clearance needed over the driveway, he asked? Uh, oh, over the pipe. On those, yeah. on those pipes. Um, I think I, that was. I did put in a spec um, in the NOI for the ADS pipe. Um, let me see if I can find it. It was, um, it, it is able to be a uh, very shallow cover though. And, and uh, I confirmed that with, uh, minimum, uh, with. Minimum one foot cover. So you're talking burying it. So, so you got, a foot of cover, you got a foot of pipe, that's two feet. Um, so how how far down are the pipes going to be? How, how sunk into the... I'm, I'm just trying to get some elevation. You know, when we originally <clears throat> put this plan together, it was the understanding of the Conservation Commission at that time, um, those few years ago, that, um, that the, the wetland was flowing to the north. Did you hear what I said? Paul? Yeah, again, I apologize. I'm, I, wish I, I wish I was there. Becky, again, can you help? Yeah, so um, I was saying that when this was originally looked at many years ago, it was the understanding that the wetland flowed to the north, um, and that's where it connected. So he's questioning about um, when the pipes get put in, how much cover is going to be needed how far down are the pipes going to sit now um and how much fill would need to be brought in right and will, um, will the water flow to the north the, the, the pipes if, if you recall there 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 was there were pretty obvious low points um yeah. along along there and and that's that's where the that's where the pipes would be uh that's where the pipes would be put um so i think you know they're um, I, I don't think you know minimal, if any, if any fill. I think would be needed to uh, you know to get that one foot of cover um, over the over those those pipes. And and again, you know, there's really there's really no no perceptible grade uh, across here. There's no channel. Uh, you know, there may be ultimately a little bit of a grade to the north, um, but it's it's pretty subtle. And and you know, we really just just want to provide, you know, in the event that the area fills up, like I said, in the, you know, like in the July rains that we had, 
um, there'll be a there'll be an avenue for it to go because obviously right now um, you know there's water might might weep through the, the those gravel driveways but there's no there's no open conduit so maybe an option would be that a, a condition could be added that the the pipes are sited at the lowest points in the driveway within the wetland obviously to minimize the need to bring in um, fill for cover uh, and to be field located by Paul or the professional wetland scientists and only the minimum about minimum amount of fill needed to, to provide that cover and the the grade up to it that's that's perfectly reasonable <clears throat> it, one, one final question if you are putting the you're expanding the um, wetland on lot five uh, yes. Will you be? Will that expansion drain from lot six and seven? The the replication area will uh, because we're adding the the six hundred or so square feet that's shown in red on lot seven. We're adding that to the lot five replication area, so um, it will extend on on lot six um, and and you know, tie into my blue uh, wetland boundary and, and the whole the whole thing will be, you know, essentially at one continuous yeah. uh, wetland area. So that ultimately, ultimately it will drain, you know, towards the, the low point. You know, you can see kind of if you connect the, the proposed culvert on lot five and the proposed culvert on lot seven, you know, that's kind of a low point across, um, across the area. And then, and then, you know, the wet one was uh, very narrow on 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 lot eight. So obviously, the whole that's where the whole point is there. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Paul, is there? Go ahead. Is there any horizontal expansion of those driveways? Are they going to be wider than they are currently? The, I, I think I understood the question about the the. the Talking about basically the difference between my wetland boundary and the one from 1980 or so. I'm just asking when when the new driveways are put in, are they going to be wider than what's currently there? Oh well, I mean we're we're um, you know we're we're proposing to take the existing wetland boundary on on lot five and six and essentially move it uh, the east towards towards Cedar Street. Is that, am I answering your question? No, I think, it, so they're not, they're not, the only work required on the driveway for this is to raise that elevation for the cross pipe. Okay. So they shouldn't be expanding. There's no expansion of driveway. There's no filling of the rest of the driveway. It's just proposed to, to meet that, um, to get that grade they need to cover for the pipe. Okay. Correct, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you, Becky. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood the question. Okay. One more question. With all of this moving of wetlands that you've been describing, is there going to be any net loss of wetland area? Not at all. There'll be there'll be an increase of I forget the number, uh, roughly roughly twenty five hundred square feet, um, because we'll we'll be working we'll be working as Becky said, you know, right up you know you have to work right up to the edge of the wetland. Um, yeah, but but you know, we'll set erosion controls. My protocol calls for setting erosion controls there, pulling material, you know, pulling the so cutting the soil back because we need to lower the grade. We cut the soil back away from the wetland. Um, so we'll be working, you know, by, by necessity, we'll be working very close, um, but never in the wetland. And um, and there'll be a net increase of of roughly twenty five hundred square feet. All right. <clears throat> Any other further questions? Nope. Michael, do you want to speak on? on? Uh, if, if I may, just a couple of times. Sure. Yep. Yeah, you can come up, you can stand, or you can sit and use that one if you'd like. I sit too much during the day, I'll stand. <laughs> um, I am Mike Young, I'm the property owner in question. Um, first question right off the top of my head is, is this temporary permit, does that allow us to actually do any work? or? We have to wait until the full permit is, is issued. So um, when it's approved, we issue um, the orders of conditions. Right. 
um, and that would be the, the approval. So once that's received, it'll be issued, there's an appeal period, and there's, there's conditions in there. So once the pre-construction conditions, we call them on that, then work can start. Okay. And we should give them some dates and times, though. For example, after it's approved, the appeal period is only 10 days? 10 business days, yeah. 10 business days. Okay. So what you do is make a decision about seeing the number of residents that have come and objected to the plan and make your decision about those 10 days as to whether you want to chance it or not. Well, you can't, you can't start working until not supposed to start final working. order conditions from DEP, but you can start preparing to, to do the work. Um, I think there's a couple of things Paul um, will have to talk to you about that he'll have to work on with DEP, which would be submitting the request for um, superseding Certificate of Compliance, um, looks like DEP wants that probably before the work starts, that way it kind of closes out, there's no overlapping work. Um, and then the, um, the, the wetland, the 401 cert that DEP mentioned too. So those are a couple of things that um, DEP is requiring that needs to be done, so Paul can work on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Becky, assuming, assuming, uh, assuming there is an approval um, that gets issued, um, I, I would like to ask the commission if, if during the appeal period, um, you know, because I know it, you know it takes some time to get things out, and there's a couple of weeks of the appeal period. Um, would it, uh, is is it typically acceptable for uh, for this commission to to let things like the uh, erosion control installation um, go ahead at at risk during that appeal period? Yeah, we've we've allowed in the past the or they have allowed in the past erosion control install. The word is at risk, though. Right, it's at your risk. Anyway, go ahead, sir. Oh, and just just a few items of clarification based on the questions from the board. Um, with the my existing driveway, which is the paved driveway at two thirty seven, and also that gravel uh, gravel driveway cut on lot seven next to me um, no matter what we've had including hurricane Bob this 13 inches of rain in July uh, and other heavy rain snow slush periods I've seen over the years there's never any standing water pressing against those driveways from the southerly side what comes down just sits and then drains away um, I would say it's probably even unlikely after those drain pipes are installed, and I think Paul alluded to this earlier, I think it will be unlikely that we ever see any flowing water coming through those pipes. But uh, to ensure the, the, the continuity of the wetland, you know, we're, we're going to do what's being asked. Uh, and I, I think that's it. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Did you want the, the comments from DEP? I have an extra one, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Becky, let's try the audience. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, we can start first here. Is there um, any yep. in the audience that wants to speak in regards to the notice of intent? Oh, all right. Try the phone line. All right. Uh, good evening. Is there anyone on the public line who would like to speak in regards to the 231 through 237 Cedar Street notice of intent? Again, is there anyone on the line that would like to speak in regards to the notice of intent for 231, 237 Cedar Street? Uh, there's no one on the line. All right. Motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Make a motion that we approve of the um, NOI 300 1107 as discussed with the indications from the agent. Second. Discussion? Uh, if you could just clarify for me one more time with how that will work with regard to DEP. You mean for what DEP has asked here? Well, yeah. So I would, I would recommend that um, it would be a condition that they've received, if required, the 401 water quality cert prior to the start of work. Um, any other permitting that's required would typically, typically be required prior to the start of work. Um, and then also that they um, submit for the superseding certificate of compliances. There's two of them for the project. 
Pi no, I, so I had two excuse, excuse me, Becky, can I, can I comment on that? I think there's a problem with what you just said. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Paul, um, you can't comment on it. It's closed. Well, you can ask that they um, submit the request for the superseding um, certificate of compliance. Um, it may take DEP a while to issue one, and that might be what his concern is, but you can at least have it so it's been filed. Okay. Yes, because just as a point of, point of information, it, it, it's taking DEP um, over a year to issue the four ones. Okay. Okay. Well, we certainly don't want that. <laughs> right. I guess we can um, we can change that to um, apply if you would like for the 401 water quality cert if if required. It needs to be determined if yeah, it's required. Yeah, that has to be determined. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Just file for it. Well, the motion automatically includes all the things that DEP had requested. Also, it's just part of the whole package. Well, it can be if you want it to. Except, except they're asking for the grades and we're saying it's okay to right and I think you can use your discretion with that to get that on the as built That's afterwards the that I for this situation yeah yep. right. so I will right, change that to um, file for those prior all right okay that works for me with those with that discussion um, we have a second on the motion yep. discussion on the motion we have a vote on the motion yep. all in favor Great. All right. All right. Yep. Now you can go to work. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We'll look forward to it, and then uh, I'm sure be uh, be talking to Becky as as we get into uh, into uh, implementation. So, Thanks, Paul. Thank Thank you all very much. Yep. Got to get 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 a better setup or come in next time. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> you see, I guess I'm right. <laughs> Um, we are at 615 easily. Um, wow. 35 Bennett's Road, continuation but not in Hawaii. Um, landscape improvements, DP oh, file you. number 300 1106. Beck? All right, so this is a continuation from the last meeting. I just don't know if we have Jay Dubois on the line here. There's yes, I'm here. Oh, great. All right. Um, Jay, I'm just going to pull up the new plan here um, so since the last meeting I'll just go do a quick summary here um, since the last meeting um, I did go out and um, meet with the engineer and the contractor to discuss the um, the retaining well close to the shore part of its shoreline um, to see the water levels out there and get a better understanding of um, what they're looking to do so we did define that when we were out there and just to let you know too that the water line has greatly receded um, and the areas they want to work aren't currently um, in water. So that would be good for, for conditions for repairing the wall. So what they'd like to do, it's a dry laid stone wall. Um, part of it is um, failing. Those They'd like to um, redo the whole wall and then add drainage um, in the back of the wall too because there currently isn't any and in, including um, replacing the steps there. So we did um, look at where we considered bank um, and did measure that out. So it was about four linear feet on each side. They revised the notice of intent to include the eight linear feet of temporary impact um, as well as um, submit the revised plan. Um, did you want me to pull up the plan for discussion? Did you? Uh, yeah, bring it up. Eric okay. wants to see it because he was, I actually had it to look in front of you. Got it okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I, 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 do, I remember what you were discussion. driving uh, from the meeting. So, yeah. Yeah, so Jay, I'm just going to uh, pull that up now. Um, there are notes in there that they added with the you know, sequence of construction for this portion. Let's see. Let me just share my screen and see if that's. Can everyone read that or I can, you know, zoom in and navigate around. So, right, you can see the wall construction notes that he added on there. Um, Jay, is there anything else you want to add in on that? No, I think you summarized it very well. Right. David, any comments? No comments. Eric? Nothing. Oh, I'm good. I appreciate the revisions. Yeah, um, one question I had, Jay, the, um, 
the lawn when we were there um, several weeks ago was sopping wet. Mm. And it really should not have been. I mean, you can tell me it rained the day before, and I'll agree with you, but um, it was really beyond raining the day before. Is there something that's going on there that um, we don't understand? Jay, did you hear? Um, I, okay. Yeah, and I know that I did take a look. I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I know we did kind of talk about that briefly when we were out there. It did seem like there were a couple spots still that seemed slightly damp, but overall, it. I mean, I wasn't out there when it was sopping wet, but it seemed to be overall, you know, pretty dry from what I saw. I don't know, if, Becky, if you had a different kind of interpretation when we were out there, but yeah, no, it, it did dry up a lot. And when I had gone out there in July, it was pretty wet too, and that's when we got a lot of that rain. Um, yeah. There were a couple kind of soft spots, but um, most of it did did dry up. And you could see with that um, re the retaining wall there, there was a water, a lot of water standing on the stones. A lot of um, I think groundwater that's coming through in that area too. So I think it's just maybe the elevation too. Well, and I sink more than you do. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Do we need to go to the public? Yep. Yep. Um, anyone we... in the public that would like to speak on the notice of intent for 35 Bennett's Road in the audience? No. Nope. All right. We'll go to the line. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak in regards to the notice of intent for 35 Bennett's Road? Again, anyone on the public line who would like to speak in regards to the notice of intent for 35 Bennett's Road? There is nobody on the line. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion, David? All in favor of that. Of course, you're right, in favor of closing the public hearing. Okay, done. And do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve of DEP file number 300-1106, um, 35 Bennett's Road as discussed. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Right. Thank you. Thank you, have a good night. Yep. You too. We are now at 59 Bennett's Road, notice of intent to raise and rebuild a single family home, septic system, well, and associated site work, DEP file number 300-1103. Right. Lenny, how you doing? Good evening, fine, thank you. Good. So, do you want me to give a quick summary? Okay. Yep. All right, so just um, since the, the last meeting, so at the Last meeting, a plan was presented with a um, revised uh, septic system um, that the Board of Health, um, this was put on hold while they went through the Board of Health process um, to see what system would be allowable for the raise and rebuild there. Uh, they did work out a plan, which was, um, well, y you saw the, the draft plan at the last meeting um, with the system that was being presented to the Board of Health. So since our last meeting, that system was um, approved by the Board of Health um, for this project. Um, and the plan was revised to include the removal, of, they believe it's three trees um, in different areas in the property um, that would appear to need to come down for either the septic system install or the installation of the house. Um, there are some replacement plantings that were included. Um, the commission at the last meeting also did ask, um, there were concerns with um, the very small size of the lot, especially on the shoreline side, with putting the house in. Um, so the commission did ask to look at um, alternative options to minimize disturbance over there. Yep. Robert? Okay. All right, I can pull up the plan if you want me to show yeah, that. Yeah, please. Yeah. Lenny, is there anything else you'd like to, to add? Okay. Yep, yeah, thanks. Okay, what actually transpired from, from our bring last it up, meeting is that the, um, 
Zoning Board of Appeals was all, wasn't mentioned, but the thing is they've also uh, approved the uh, construction of the single family house that is as shown on the plan. And the, the, the house that is shown on the plan was actually submitted to you in the packet for the uh, notice of intent, which showed the uh, first floor elevation and the second floor elevation, which was just basically a cathedral ceiling on the uh, shore side area with only one bedroom on the second floor. This what happened is that the building itself will actually end up with uh, two bedrooms uh, and a living area to accommodate only two bedrooms. What happens there is that the uh, fact that the two bedrooms is, is uh, I wouldn't say non-conforming, but, but is conforming to the state regulations where the state says you should normally have three bedrooms with uh, the construction. Uh, what happened with the uh, meeting with the uh, Board of Health, we're going to have to put a restriction that is going to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds prior to the issuance of a building permit for the property that the, sub the house will be subject to two bedrooms only. It will, will have no increase. So you'll find that the increase uh, will never happen from this point forward. The two bedrooms that are there are as, as by code, which is with Title V, which was submitted to the uh, Board of Health. Uh, we are not derogating from the intent of occupancy or use, and that has two bedrooms. Uh, it's just that the way the layout is that they, they wanted the two bedrooms with the room and with a stair well going into it, which you see in the building elevations, is such that with the stairs upstairs and everything, the house is basically as shown here, which is minimal. I mean, what we're really talking basically is that the uh, original house was roughly 700 square feet, where right now with the stairwell and everything, and the house is going up to a little over 800 square feet. So we're saying basically within the same uh, area of occupancy uh, within the footprint, and we're actually uh, going into uh, the deck and everything on the building itself will be over 25 feet from the water, so we're not encroaching in there. And that as far as the 50-foot uh, setback, um, we have actually come in with, with less taking within the 50 feet than we would have if we had it just the way the house was with the deck before. The deck actually is, is decreased slightly off the shore frontage, uh, off the 25-foot setback, which is going into the 50. So we, we're actually ending up with uh, less of an impact uh, within that area um, compared to what it is presently. Uh, what we also did is that we, we added uh, vegetation onto the uh, property itself on the uh, basically the um, northeasterly side. We're putting in uh, deciduous trees up along the uh, upper part of the parking lot uh, of the parking lot that's on the upper part of the uh, lot, which there's, there's two trees that are gonna be put in there. And we've all, also, on the uh, southerly side, along the uh, area in the front, we've, we've added uh, uh, winter boxwood plantings along the uh, southerly portion, and then along the uh, northerly portion, we uh, a lot, uh, accommodate with uh, the uh, winter gem uh, boxwoods on the northerly portion. So we've got shrubbery on both north and south sides for buffers on the two, and we've got the deciduous trees coming in to um, negate the uh, trees that were being removed, because the last time we came in here, they said there would be some trees removed. Yes, there will be, in, in that one basically on the southerly side uh, adjacent to Bennett's Road, there was a, uh, a large 16-inch oak tree which is overhanging on the house itself. That is being removed, and then there's two trees within the uh, Leachfield facility uh, that will have to go, and they will be removed. So we're, we're taking those out, and what we're doing is replacing it with the hardwoods uh, that are going in on the northerly side along with the uh, boxwoods which are on the north and south sides. 
If anyone has a question, I'd be happy to answer them. Becky, you have the, um, the slide we had last week with the comparison of the old house and the new house? Oh, uh, yep. The colored plan. Oh, it was an image, that's why. Right. Oh, it's for the August 3rd meeting, that's why. It's in a different folder. Hiding. Here we go. This isn't the one we looked at last time, I don't think. Oh, yeah, it is. Yep. Do you want me to zoom into the house a little bit more for you? I beg your pardon? Do you want me to zoom into Yeah, if you can, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That, that's what I'm looking at. It's, it's, um. So the black line, black dash is existing structure. Yeah. And then the, the purplish line is the new one. We got the 25 foot and the 50 foot buffer on there. Okay. David? No questions. Eric? Um, so just just so I'm clear, it looks like there's uh, a red maple uh, and a oak planting, and then 11 boxwood trees being planted to, to kind of compensate for the three oaks that are be coming down. Is that is that accurate? Uh, well, actually, there's there's two 14-inch uh, oaks that are coming down within the vicinity of the leach field itself. Yep. And there's also, there's uh, an oak tree which is adjacent to the road itself, uh, and that will be removed. So those, those three trees will, will be removed. Yeah, right. Okay, and then what we're doing is we're actually going in with the boxwoods, and, and we're actually putting in two hardwoods where we're putting in a red maple on the uh, northeasterly corner, and then just southerly of that where we're putting in a uh, red oak. Okay. Yeah, so there's a there's yeah. 11 plantings going in against. The, okay, yep, that's that's what I wanted. To and then clarify. also adding on to it, what we did is there was, there was a question before which I forgot to mention, is that there was a, they were wondering about the parking facility uh, relative to the house, and what we did is we we set aside an area adjacent to the leach field and we're putting in a, a three inch layer of three quarter inch stone, which is basically adjacent. To the uh, northerly property line. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. So um, the way I see this is that there was no change in the footprint of the house, the proposed house, right? No, basically right. There's nothing. That, that's incorrect. There's a 15% increase. No, no, no. I'm saying from the last plan that we saw. Oh, yeah. Okay. From the last. Right. From the last plan that we saw, that's there's it's no the change. same. No, yeah. same footprint proposed. Because the problem is, is that it is an increase in the footprint in the 50 foot buffer, um, which I think is what you pointed out. Yeah. The last meeting. Wait, no. That that statement is not true. There, there's the uh, the. The deck and everything was moved back and everything before it was basically 24 feet from the lake, 24 and a half, and now the deck's going to be 25 and a half. We actually moved that structure back a foot from the lake shoreline. Right. Okay. But, but, but the footprint of the... The, the footprint previous. basically is going from the original footprint of the house with a deck was 776 square feet. Where the uh, new one, the way it is right now, is around 820, 40 square feet, which requires it's roughly uh, the actual taking of the uh, the space is roughly uh, uh, 40 percent. Okay. However, the uh, taking uh, displacement of the land itself is still under the, uh, the regulation in the town, which says it has to be a minimum of 15 percent maximum coverage for a house and we're below that threshold at 14.7 so we're, we're less than the required by town regulations zoning and uh, 
We uh, are not going for any variances relative to setback relative to Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we went for the special permit, we went through the public hearing, and we got it approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So just to clarify, so, right, it looks like they did remove a little bit of structure within the 25 foot. There is probably some small expansion within the 50 because you we did take they did did take some out of the 25 and then there is um, it looks like quite a bit of an increase outside of the 50 foot. I mean I don't know what those numbers are exactly. I don't think we have it have it broken down. So there is a increase. I don't think it's probably the 15 percent within the 50 foot, um, which is the whole increase in the structure. It looks like some of that's probably outside of the 50 foot too. But yes, there is some increase. Okay. I have one comment. I had forgotten about this one, and Lenny brought it up. I have a great deal of difficulty, Lenny, believing that there's a fair exchange when you cut down deciduous trees and you plant boxwood. The boxwood has no native skills to it. It does not attract birds. It does not attract animals. The only reason for putting a boxwood in is for decorative purposes. And there's about 8,000 other plants that could be put into that same area that would be beneficial to the area, and they would be far more common to the lake. Boxwood is not grown commonly on the lake. What we're doing it's not found in the wild. What we're doing is putting them in that area is what we're, we're trying to go for screening for both the uh, north and south. Well, you can go for screening with all kinds of berry-bearing bushes. We could, we could put berry-bearing. If you want to change them to put in... Uh, uh, bearing bushes that's fine with me I don't know. all I'm thinking about Benny is you're taking down trees that were helpful to the environment and you're planting something that is not giving anything back and boxwood is that plant that will not be giving anything back so I would appreciate it if you would put something in there that is beneficial to the environment of that lake Okay, well, we could we could go Mayberry or something like that. If you want to put the berry boring, I'd say it's fine. I'm sure the client would be willing to do that, wouldn't you? They'd be more than happy to do it. Okay. If Good. Thank you. My um, just my comments on it. The the house is going from is going to a two story house. It's expanding by by my math, but you, you went to some more specific detail. Um, the footprint's about 15% greater than it was. It's closer to the lake than the old existing house is. Um, I don't think that these, it, it's a walk out from, from the lower floor. I, I don't see that this is, I think, I think this is not helpful to the lake. I think that we need to go back and look at the, what, what the grandfathering says. Grandfathering doesn't say you can expand it by 15%. So that's my position on it. I, just ask, I don't see how it's closer to the lake based on what I'm seeing. Well, you see that? Because the, the out black line? See, I have the outline in purple. So black is, a, is current conditions. What? The black is current condition. The black is the current condition. Yep, purple is uh, proposed. Pur they did purple they did pull the it new. back a little oh. bit. They pulled it back a little I bit was away. That wrong. So the black. Oh, interesting. All right. And the black line is well inside of the uh, purple line. Is that what we're calling that? Purple? So the purple. No. So the house is being pulled forward. No, it's no. being moved away from the lake. Yes. So the red the red line is the 25 foot buffer that you see. Yeah. Right. The I'm just purple. looking at the current plan. The the purple outline that's in the current plan. Are you looking at the one I have on the screen here? Yeah, I see that. That clarifies that. The, the black dashed line, is that the new footprint or the nope. old? Old footprint. Right, so the purple dashed line in my, and what I'm looking at is the old footprint. That looks mm -hmm. to be closer to the lake than the black imprint that is supplied here. Yeah, you is that accurate? Yeah. You can, you, you can use your old argument against yourself because you just reverse it. <laughs> well, if the footprint is the purple here, then I would I agree with you. If the footprint is the black, then <laughs> uh, you know. This is the new footprint. Is this black heavy line? Yeah. So and the, the old house, the old cottage, is this purple dotted line. 
Right, so that looks further back, set back to me. That's it a, is. A, it right. is. You're correct. Right. The new so, house is this edge here, and the old house is well, this we, edge here. Yeah, so it's it's it is not it, at least that, as I see it. Right. It's not closer to the lake. The 25 foot buffer is covering, so that's not everything looks so tight because this 25 foot buffer. The structure itself, as shown on this plan, is not closer to the lake. Right. That's that's what I see. The new, the new that's structure. The I, yeah, because this is what. Yeah. If you, it's easier to see here. The purple dash is the existing structure. The black is the new structure. So I assume that this. Well, the purple dash is further away from the light. The purple dash is closer because it, it, here's here's where it starts, right? And they pulled it back a foot. I assume that's a deck, buddy. Yes. And then the structure itself is the dark line. So it's. It is pulling back, not significantly. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. Just for accuracy, it looks like it is further back. One foot. It is a foot back, yes. Now, how much of that is patio versus house that I don't know? Lenny, maybe you could clarify that. Is, is the current footprint, no. is that house right there or is that patio right there? That's patio. All right. Or deck. Or deck, or deck. whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Right. okay. Yeah. Uh, Becky, you want to see if the, anybody in the audience would like to speak? Sure. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak? You, you just got to come up to the mic and introduce yourself. Mm. Oh, um, as I mentioned, uh, we will plant whatever trees we need. The house is coming back from the lake as far as it possibly can. Okay, can you stop for one second, sure. please? You have to tell the general public who you are I'm and where sorry. you live. Yeah. My name is Dale Perry. I uh, own the property at 59 Bennett's Road. Thank you. Um, yep. I am trying to get a two-bedroom um, house there because, uh, you know, I just, sorry. Um, and the only way to do that is by going up. There's currently no bathroom in the house except a, a small closet on the front porch, so I need to put some bathrooms in and expanding the footprint that slight bit is really the only way that we can do that. There's no closets in the bedrooms, and, and we need, I need some closets, so just I'd like to get a expanded, small expanded footprint. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak in regards to the notice of intent for 59 Bennett's Road? Again, anyone on the line who would like to speak in regards to the notice of intent for 59 Bennett's Road? There's nobody on the line. Make All a right. motion we close the public hearing. Can I ask one question on Lenny before we close it? Yep. Just, uh, is there, are, are there any suggestions that aren't on this footprint that can be net improvements to the property to offset the additional square footage that is being requested. Is there anything that you can think of? So it looks like the applicant is pretty pretty amenable. Are there any things that you can do to improve the, the overall performance of the footprint within? To be honest with you, no. Because what happened actually is we went through with the design plans for the house itself. We went through the hearing with uh, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. We went through the hearing with the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. uh, what, excuse me, with the uh, Board of Health on both layout for the building, use of the building, and everything else. And then we got approval from both boards. I, I don't know what to say other than the fact that we came with an affirmative approval with both boards. Okay, after, right. I've been at this right now going on four to five months. Yeah. We didn't, I didn't do this in one day. No, I, I <laughs> Lenny, I'm just asking. Okay, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not asking because I want, I'm not asking uh, uh, no, for I'm just, more interest. just sending you the facts, okay? Yeah. Okay, it's been That's, over that was the only question. I, I second David's motion to close the No, Thank before you. you do that, oh. um, go ahead. Is it too late? No, 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 it's not too late. Dan Minshaw, 57 Bennett's Road, on the abutter um, on the south south side of this property. And I've lived there it's now six years, and the property next to me has been an eyesore. They've pulled water off the lake for all of the time I've been there. There's been multiple people there.
trailers there. There's no, no formal septic. God knows where the septic's been going. And you say that a box which doesn't improve the property, that really bothers me because anything will improve what we've been going through there for six years. I think she's added, asking for a minimal increase here and it's going to be a benefit to the lake and to all the residents on that lake. It's gonna be a, a beautiful place. And she's not asking for the moon, she's asking for just a livable space. No garage, nothing like that. It's just a small, very small house. And I think we should be a little bit flexible in this situation considering what, especially what the property is. It was a, a big mess there. Thank you. Thank you. I will reaffirm my second of David's motion because of okay. okay. You you are persistent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any discussion? All in favor of closing the public hearing? And next Mark. we have to make a motion to approve of the NOI for rebuild, and that would be at um, geez, I can't read that number. A hundred Paradise Lane. No, 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 we can do that too. <laughs> it's 300 1103. I was upgrading your house. <laughs> um, 59 Bennett's. At 300 1103, 59 Bennett's Road. Second. All right. With the change in the uh, plantings as discussed and, yes with and the, the change other, in the planting and, and, and the other notes with the notes that the agent has yeah. derived all right discussion you've heard my position I take uh, they could use the exact square footage and put together a perfectly good house and they'll come back with that we, we've been through this we've had we put um, Garages across the street and all kinds of other things because you know along the lake and we need to hold ground on Keeping the quality of water in such a small lake that you 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 know If you fall down you hit your neighbor's house now So that's that's my position on it so. Unfortunately your vision is too late. We already closed the public hearing. No, I'm, I'm I'm telling the board this. Yeah, we're in the discussion. I, you know, that's my position on it. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor, and yep. it's been seconded. Yeah, I know. Yep. No, any further discussion? I was giving discussion. I'm sorry if you. Nope. All right. All in favor? All opposed? All right. It carries. Okay. Now the real work starts. All right, we are now at, now at the one that David wanted to approve before. 100 Paradise Lane, <laughs> notice of intent. Uh, Thank you for coming in. And rebuild. Okay. Do we have a um, number on this, Becky? Not yet. DEP has not issued a file number on this project. Okay. All right. Becky, you didn't want to call it 300-XXXX? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this was um, continued from the last hearing. We did not have a DEP file number. Um, the commission did um, have some questions um, and some concerns about uh, the increase of impervious surface on the project site, um, a loss of tree cover on the site, and did ask the engineer to go back and look at some options to explore mitigating, uh, replacing trees, and um, uh, you know, looking at more pervious surface options. And mitigation for the for any in, impervious areas. Um, another thing that we had co commented on that we just still need is the additional filing fee because there is the work along the shoreline. DEP does look at that as a different category and does require that, so we'll still need that. We're still waiting on the DEP file number. Um, no new plans have been submitted to date, and I'll let Len Lenny speak on that. It's my understanding he's working with the um, applicant to address your comments. Yeah, what we're actually doing relative to the dock, what we're going there, the dock is just standard. It's going under a chapter 91. And it, the only filing fee on that was the uh, fact that it was going under category five, which was a hundred dollar difference. That was, I think, did I give did no. I send that to you? Well, it will be category five 
for, for the for, for the other work, for yeah. The, for the other yeah. work that's going to be done, where which we we went before just with the uh, NOI, so we eliminated the uh, category five in our submittal. But what we'll have to do is go with an addendum for the hundred dollar fee, which is uh, between the town and the state for the category five on the dock itself. So are you asking for a continuation? Uh, what we're doing. Uh, I think right at the moment uh, we, we can't come up with real argument because we don't even have a file number. And I think it's a waste of time for you and for me to okay. argue. Okay. All and right. Not ask for a continuance until a file number comes through. How long have we been waiting for the file number? I. It, it's been so long I can't remember. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it's <clears throat> no offense, but you know, I I, I try to keep. You know, I've been working at this say for over 50 years, and I try to keep my clients somewhat near pacified. But right now, because of this cop out, which I call COVID-19, nothing's being done. We 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 submit uh, plans now uh, under uh, computerized submittal, mail submittal, reaction zero. I don't know what to tell you. It's yeah. it, it's sad. We're, we're get, you know we're we're going, uh, uh, it, and it's frustrating. Not not only is it frustrating for me, but it's embarrassing because I can't get anything done. Yeah, and how do you think the customer feels? Uh, I'd rather not you answer my phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. All right. So we're, we're asking for a continuation. Yeah. I would recommend contacting DEP. Um, yeah. I try that. Yeah. You know, you know, you know I, I might as well go into the men's room and yell. I'm going to get the same effect there. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know they, they did tell us that um, in the past little over a year that their um, applications are up 60% for Central, Central District, right. um, and they're short-staffed, too. So, I mean, that's what they've, they've told us, and that's why we're seeing such a long time to get our file numbers for right. our projects. So. We understand. We, we have to wait as well. So, but I'll tell you what. It's been a pleasure coming down to say hello. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Um, the next meeting on, is September twenty. Well, was one win today. today. <laughs> all, right. all in favor of a continuation? To September twenty-first. Yep, that's the next yep. meeting. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. It's a continuation. Oh. We, we. A lot of negativity there, Lenny. You know, it's cynical. <laughs> All right, we are now. <laughs> this is not a segue. We are now at um, 30 Main Street and um, 25th Kill Road. Notice of intent development of a residential and commercial site cul de sac subdivision. DEP file number 300 1086. Becky, you. you. All right. Good. All right, so this is um, just a quick summary. This is a continuation from our last meeting. Um, at that time, um, we had received additional materials for review. It appeared they had worked to address um, the commission's questions and comments. Um, and we're pretty much um, at the point where, um, if the board is ready, looking for a vote on this project as, as proposed. Uh, we do have the applicant here. We do have the engineer um, online as well. Uh, my recommendation would be that um, vote to close the public hearing and approve the project with orders conditions with the um, conditions that were outlined in the draft permit. Um, some of the uh, special conditions that would be applicable for this project um, that are um, different than our standard would be the um, requirements for the wetland restoration work, oversight and reporting during work, um, and perpetual conditions for stormwater management activities. All right. Any further discussion from the board? I, I just I listened to the public hearing uh, from two weeks ago. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for the adjustments to the plan. I know this hasn't been an easy process for you. That's okay. uh, I don't I, I don't know that you and I specifically differ on the uh, uh, adding that to right. the plan, but uh, I want to thank you uh, for yep. uh, your work on on getting this done. So yeah, no, so thank you for saying that. And uh, I wouldn't say I was happy to do it, but I'm also not here to you know, squabble and check sure. fights over silly things. So we move on from that. Yeah. Thank you, though. 
So, uh, motion, unless there's any other comments, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Any discussion? Do All in favor? Actually, do we need to ask the public? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we really should do that. Well, just step back a second here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'll give you that motion, but let's hit the public first. Uh, is there anyone in the audience or on the public line who would like to speak in regards to the 30 Main Street 20 Fisk Hill Road subdivision, which is a continued notice of intent? We have nobody on the line and nobody in the audience that would like to speak. Thanks, Aaron. Eric? Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, do I have a motion on yeah, the have, table? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll move that we uh, approve. Let's see, what, what uh, are we looking at here? Uh, DEP file number 300-1086 uh, with the, all the appropriate agents' notes. I'll second that motion. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Three and all opposed. One opposed. All right. There we have it. You yeah, won't see my DEP number anymore. <laughs> Becky will. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you don't need it, you could probably give it to Lenny for another job. <laughs> <laughs> you want my Lenny? <laughs> no, he's, he's moved on. All right, thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Barnacle. I appreciate your help. I remember trying to be kind last week. Or two weeks ago, so I appreciate that. Thank you. See yep. you. Thank you. All right, we are now at 655 30, 134 48 Lake Road. Our request for amend an OOC, DEP file number 300 1067, edition. Um, of pavement to Lake Road. So we did see, receive from um, the engineer that's working with the applicant on this project a request for um, a written request for a continuance. Um, I mean, it's a it took some time to get as part of the background here the, the quotes through. They have a lake association, so they had to work through that um, before they go out and do the field work. So they do have approval to start looking at the field work to put together as built plan. I've also spoken to the um, applicant that had some questions, concerns, comments on um, the process with, um, you know, the amendment process and the requirement of the conditions. They did change, um, from my understanding, the, the approved plan. Um, so I did talk to him about that and the need that, um, because this is stormwater and it's subject to the stormwater management standards and they changed the plan that they do need to have the, an engineer look at that. Um, to let you know that's still in substantial compliance with the intent of the, the plan to meet the standards, um, as well as it, it, it was, was paved too. So it's my understanding that we should be getting um, information. They just weren't prepared for this meeting. Um, so they've asked for a continuance um, from the representative to th our next meeting, which is the September 21st. All right. Did they change anything from the original plan? Um, there are some changes that were done. Um, I don't know exactly what was done when I spoke to the applicant. Um, he said the things they did, um, they felt were uh, on-site improvements that they added to it to enhance the plan that was submitted. Let me ask the question a different way. Did they change anything from the original plan? Yes, that's my understanding. Then why don't we have a new plan? Well, um, what I was told was that they had to go through the process of getting a, approvals um, for their quote to go out and have the engineer look at this. And it just took some time to have that happen. Well, That's see, what I we're setting a precedent here. Mr. Piapi came in, looked at the job, and started making changes without paying attention to the plan. This is not the kind of precedent that we want to set. We had a plan, we approved the plan, we expect the plan to be followed. And if the plan's not going to be followed, then you come to the board and talk about it. We did exactly the same discussion one year ago with the same person. I understand. I mean, I went over and I told them, you know, it is laid out in the permit conditions for all projects that if there's a change 
that they need to make, they need to come back to the board to um, discuss that change to see what requirements would be. So I wasn't contacted. I didn't find out about it until afterwards. So We're going to get in the same position that we got in with one other person where they're going to end up having to put cameras down into the pipes in order to prove what's there. This is craziness. Right. Well, I think, yeah, we'll have to see when the engineer goes out there what they come back with. I mean, this was a drainage improvement project for this roadway and not trying to, you know, say anything here, but, it, you know, if they made things that were improvements, it's, it might be a little bit different okay. than... Something. I don't disagree with that, but if somebody comes in and says they're going to make improvements and they show you a plan with the improvements on it... Oh, I get it. And once they get out in the field, they decide that those improvements are too good, so they want to downsize them? Well, I don't, I don't know. The engineer hasn't looked at it, so I don't know what well, the changes let's have that, let, Yeah. Let's have this conversation between the board and the applicant. Yeah. Though I do have to agree with you, David, that, you know, this is now two projects in a row specific with this contractor where he seems to feel entitled to make changes uh, as he sees yeah. fit, not necessarily as approved by us. So well, the thing I'm most worried about is 10 years from now, if something goes wrong with any of that system, they pull out the plans and they say, well, what the heck is underground? It certainly doesn't look like this plan. Right. All right. All right. Continue all in favor of a continuation. We are now at 650 and 680, Route 15, continued NOI, development of a nursery and tree farm. So um, I spoke to the applicant um, recently, and they are looking for a continuance request. I did receive a written continuance from the applicant's representative to our next meeting. They are still working to address the comments. I believe it was our July meeting. Um, we went over, we had the peer reviews, and there was a, additional required information that they needed to, to submit um, back in July, and they asked for the one-month continuation. Um, they're working on that information, is what I was told, um, and asked for the continuation. They just weren't prepared for this meeting. All right. A lot of work for a tree farm. All in favor of um, continuing? Okay. What are we on, number eight? Making up on last time here. Still, Becky, just a question about that last one. Is the amount of data that's needed for them to fill out that paperwork so significant that two months have to go by with continuations? Well, I mean, I don't have my notes in front of me, but um, part of it is alternative analysis um, necessary for the riverfront impacts and looking at the siting of the stream crossing for that perennial stream. Um, so part of that would be, if you remember, they had done an ANRAD, we issued the ORAD, but they, at that point in time, decided to only do one portion of the property. Um, so we don't have the information necessary required through the wetland regs um, to look at or be able to determine if the um, analysis is sufficient for the riverfront impacts they're asking right. for and the location of the stream crossing yeah. um, as well as the need for the two additional wetland crossings that are proposed as well um, it's all information that's clearly written in, written in the wetlands protection act regs that they need to do um, and we're also things that were noted by dep so with that said um, part of what would be required from my understanding of reading that and what dep said is that they would have to do additional wetland delineation on that property to support the need for those three crossings my confusion is that when we agreed to have them cut the project down in sky, in size, or in scope, I thought it was going to speed the process up. Right. I think what they're saying is that um, they, can't, they can't revise that project pretty much. They can't use that disturbed riverfront area in the front, which would reduce the need for the crossing, um, and or use that in a portion of what's in the, the rear. So. Um, yeah, I think we need, again, we need to work with the board you actually what they're doing we don't know what they're saying let's get let's get them before us yeah okay so it's a continuance a request um what? to the next meeting uh, if you want to vote on that is oh you did okay yeah, sorry we already voted on oh sorry yeah. got sidetracked there all right um 
Lead mine. Yep. Lead mine lane. Um, continued notice of intent. Construction of a single family home, well, and septic system. DP file number um, 300 1073. All right, so I don't believe we have uh, Glenn Kowalski or anyone on the line. I did speak to them last week um, to get an update on this. They are uh, making some progress down there. I did, um, I was in the area today, so I did stop by and just take a quick look. Um, they've made some good progress, but they're not, they're not finished yet. Um, they also sent, he sent an additional email um, yesterday kind of summarizing where they're at. So it's my understanding they're looking for a continuance request to the next meeting because they have not been able to fully um, address the restoration plan. It's, it's not finished yet. Did they give you an idea in the email as to whether or not they thought they'd be done? Well, the they, they thought they'd be done by today or were hoping to have it done. But um, just when I went by, there's still some plantings that need to go in. The restoration um, on the opposite side of the house, on that side of the road, needs to be finished. Looks like the Coltec unit needs to go in. Um, the driveway's been reduced. Um, the upper lot restoration looks like it's been done, too. So, okay. so looks right. like they've made good progress, but still working on it. This is another one. Continue, continue, continue. Yeah, well, so. Uh, that, that this it's part of us, part of them. So. Yeah. All right. All in favor of allowing a continuation? Okay. Wetland decisions. Tree removal permit application for 194 and 196 Big Allen. Beck? Yep, so um, we do have the um, property owner and applicant here, um, and I'll let him go over his request. I did send some information. Oh, you can sit down if you want. You don't have to stand the whole time. Um, so this is a request that recently came in um, for two properties on Lake Road. It's 194 and 196. Uh, there are 10 large pine trees, nine 11. are... 11? Okay, sorry. Uh, 11, um, 10 clustered in one location between the two houses and another which is located in front of one of the structures. Um, these are really large, tall pine trees. Um, he has some concern. I'll let him speak to you on behalf of that. Um, I did provide some photos that he provided. I went out, took some photos. I don't know if you had a chance to, to go by. It was kind of a, a last minute thing mm -hmm. that came in, so we didn't have it scheduled for the site visits, but um, considering our next meeting is in five weeks, um, he just wanted to see if we could add this um, so there wasn't a delay. Do you want, do you want to add anything about the, the trees there? You guys got any questions? I mean, there's 10 trees. My family's been up there for 100 years. Um, those trees have been there. They just, they're all clustered together. I don't think it's a healthy situation. I've already taken a couple that have died in the middle of the cluster out. Um, they're two, three, four feet apart, you know, 80 to 100 feet tall. Every year it gets worse. Yeah. You know, with the branches breaking off and stuff, they're right over the house. Uh, and I'm getting so nervous. About it's white pine. pine. Yeah. And do they have a terminal budworm? Is it, does it look like the top has died? You know what? They've got a reddish tinge on the bark that I haven't noticed well, that's just That's just age. Um, well, they're old. You know, I've got pictures. Like I said, my family's been up there for over 100 years, and I've got pictures from the 20s and 40s and stuff. Those trees are there. Um, branches break off all the time. You know, it's really a safety thing and a concern for my home and the vehicles, and I have people renting the house next door. The bedrooms are right there. Have you considered what you'll replace them with? You know, I, like I said, I've been there all my life. I know what the lake used to look like. Whatever you guys want, right up front by the water where the bank goes down, there's already five oak trees that have started. They're like a couple feet tall. I haven't got in there and cleaned the past couple of years because it's loaded with poison ivy. So the oak trees have, have come up on that bank and plant blueberry bushes there. That's a... Uh, I'm open to what you guys want to do. Yeah, I, I went by there last week, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? I mean, they are all clustered. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't 
counting wrong because I counted 11 as well. So okay, I think I just... No, it was uh, me. I tagged them all. You know, it wasn't yeah. hiding anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the wintertime, the wind comes right across the lake. We live on the east side of the lake, and yeah. it just, like, pounds us. And uh, I'm getting nervous about it now. Yeah, no, I could. I, I understand your concerns 100%, you know, uh, with, with, without question. And it looked like there were some branches that definitely had broken off and not... They, like years ago, probably within the last couple we, of years. We've had, them, we've had them pruned a couple times. Had a guy climb them and take, there was some big overhanging limbs, you know, that would load up with snow and everything. He took those off, but you can also see, yeah, stumps where branches like this have broken off. Yeah. The tough part is, I mean, these things are so big and so clumped together that the root structure that's down underneath there, you're not going to want to pull that out because that's going to disturb the, that. And, and then you're not going to be able to plant anything really effective that's going to you know replicate itself over a period of time it's 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 really a tough uh you know tough situation I was, there i was looking at it the oak tree from one side comes in and is touching just about touching the trunk on the tree in front of my house same thing with the other oak tree is like creeping in from the other way there's probably like a 50 foot swath that's going to get taken out yeah of canopy yeah David, you have, you have to. one of the things you can consider, though, for things like the oak trees that are hanging over the house, is selective pruning. Oh yeah, I'm not so worried about the oak trees. It's just the white pines. It's the pines, the branches breaking off. Yeah, he didn't mark anything but pines. Hitting the roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah and sometimes the people. Stephen, got any? Yeah, it just, you know, I always have heartache over the yeah. trees like this. Um, but, you know, I understand. Um, I, I guess we do need to have a little bit of discussion about if, I mean, it's it sounds like I didn't see the site, so it sounds yeah. like there is potential for places that we could have some plantings, just not a two to one. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that the site I, would, yeah, would support I just got the back team. last night, so I have not. Yeah. Site. I, get, I have a big history on big pines though so I put a tennis court in and as soon as I cut the tennis court in among the pines the ones that I didn't cut down started to come down so they there's a synergy within them yeah that's why if you, t if, you know and the other thing is that they always off. die up you, so you can always see what you need to take off next if you if you put the effort into so, but I'd like to take a look at them before. I Feel free. Try. Are there going to be any pine trees left, or is this is this it? Is that all there is? Um, I don't know if along the the sides of the property going down, are there any pines in there, or are those all this, deciduous? This yeah, pine tree on the other person's property, right on the side of my house, and right in the back corner, there's another pine tree right there. Those pines are kind of standing by themselves that's why they're a little bit health they're healthier you know yeah. if you look at the ones between the houses and the ones in front of the house um, I think you're going to see it's just a, a bad situation and like I said we've been up there for <laughs> I've lived there all my life and I've dealt with these pine trees um, you know I'm not really getting anything out of taking them down it's just a safety thing yeah, understand. So, uh, just so we don't. So, would you like to look at them? You're saying before? I personally would like to make a site visit. So, is 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 that for looking at what would be required for replacements? Are you thinking the, the whole gist of it? Take a look at it to see what, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I welcome okay. you. Say, there. you know, there's obviously a safety factor. There's obviously. Um, mm -hmm. No, I just wanted to clarify so that way we could see how you know if you're waiting on approval or not. I didn't know yeah. what you were concerned I can get Pat to drive me over that's there what, too that's what we're looking at right there I mean that's the clump right there in between yeah. the two houses and there's one in, in if there's two houses that's the one that is closer to the one on the right yeah and there's a there's yeah I can put it to me yeah and I, I can put them up on the big screen if you want to see too see I have to see okay them. they look pretty like they're pretty open compared to some of them that we look at 
straight down the line, Eric? Huh? So that Just so like that you know what they're talking yeah. about, yeah. Yeah. we have a normal policy of um, replacement of two trees for each one that comes down. But that's a discretionary policy depending upon the size of the property and the available space. Because <laughs> we're concerned about not only organisms being able to survive, but also the big trees help to shade the water so it neutralizes the temperature changes in the I, water. I, I've lived there all my life. I remember when there was lily pads and bullfrogs and crayfish and everything else. Um, I've seen it go downhill. The bottom used to be clean, sandy, yep. no fuzz, nothing. We used to drink the water. I totally understand. You know, I total. That's why, like, you know, you guys are going to be the ones that are going to decide anyway. So that's why yep. I didn't fill out that section on the application because right. it's just like whatever you think. So I recommend a continuation in the site visit on our next site visit. But I think we can make. I'd like to say that we can make the decision on site, so that he can. Okay. So that we don't have to wait till our next meeting. Yeah. Yep. Well, right. what we ought to do then is we ought to have a vote now to agree with whatever the visionaries okay. see on site so that it can be operable right away. Becky can just notify the man. Yeah. Do I have a second on that? Cut. Second. Okay, Eric, second. Yep. All right. All in favor? All right. So I would just say, uh, I mean, the next meeting is. Aaron, you need help with the wording on that? Isn't so four weeks, so I'd say if it, it's possible to do that sooner. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And I can, I'll coordinate with that yeah. with them, and maybe we can do that next week or. Because. I'm going. I would like to try to go too. Yeah. yeah. Since I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah. Right, we'll figure it out. We'll do that hopefully within the next. Well, one of the reasons we're going to push on this is because. Seasonally, it's better to get them planted before October 15th if there's going to be a replant. They have a better chance of success. When you go there, like I said, there's, there's some oak trees right on the crest of the bank and before it goes down into the water that already started. So I don't know if you want to take those into consideration. Well, we can look at that, yeah. Those, those boys will walk down the hill. Huh? Those birds have walked down the hill. Oh, it's right. It's, it's, just, it's, right it's actually there. a very easy walk. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's right. It's right there. You can see it. All right. Well, thank you very much thank for coming. You for cool. thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Figure that out thank with them. Yep. Becky, we're on 42 Shampoo Road. Yes, sir. Right. Request for a permit extension. Yep, uh, so this is a permit extension request for 300-1023. Um, this is expiring um, this September. Um, they haven't started, this is for construction of a single family house. They have not started the project um, due to COVID and construction costs and things like that. Um, so they're asking for an extension of, of three years for this. We went out and walked that site several years ago, Ed. Right. Yep. Yep, yep. yep. so I'd recommend. Um, I make a motion that we approve the continuation uh issue an extension of three years i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah. second too quick discussion all in favor no problem okay we're now at uh, oh, 90 wait a minute. 94 wait a minute. how long are we going to extend it for three, three years three yeah. yep All right, next. Um, 92, 94, and 96 Hall Road culvert uh, ratify an emergency authorization again, again. Yeah. Stage of proof? Kind of. Well, this is for the uh, private property. So the last one we had was for the um, DPW portion of the culvert that went under the road in the right of way work. This is for the work on the private property. Um, uh, they had a sinkhole appeared on the property um had it looked at the there's a culvert pipe that carries the stream um i don't even know how far it is exactly uh pretty far but there's different sections that they need to repair 75 yards it, wow. yeah, yeah yeah under a building yeah yep yeah pretty bad so um they've um submitted a plan ed and i went out there and we looked at this before um they submitted we asked them to submit the narrative um some sketches of the work they've submitted that um, we've issued the emergency authorization and we have that on here to ratify it. Um, they're supposed to be working on that this week. I did go by and there's uh, new pipes on site. So it looks like they're getting started. Mr. Well, I, uh, <coughs> one, 
within the emergency authorization. I'm concerned about the four or five uh, plastic pipes that go into the hole from God knows where and who knows when, and that those be cut off, taken out of the equation. Um, that was that work was already done. That area is yeah. part of the right of way with DPW. Um, I can ask them for clarification on what they yeah. did with those, but that was part of the last one. And that they don't um, bury any more of the stream, that we keep them. Okay. They're not with their proposal, though, but okay. yeah. Yeah, and that they, um, they said they were going to, um, there's a company in Auburn that can go in and blow in a new liner to go under the building? Um, so that's not part of the emergency authorization. Um, I don't know, they camered the pipe and they didn't talk about re needing to replace that portion of the pipe at this time. Um, but any additional work, the emergency authorization is only to abate the emergency. Um, can you take a look at what the camera lo shows you? Because I, yeah, I can, I can ask gonna them. If are gonna prove an emergency that allows them to push another emergency down the road. I wouldn't want to do that. Okay, that, right, they need to look at the rest of the pipe and address yeah. that and prepare a filing for that if needed. Right. Yep. Okay, no, good idea. I'm Mr. Sure Chairman, I make a motion that we um, approve of the ratifying the emergency authorization for 92, 94, 96 Hall Road culvert work. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, Becky. Thank you. We are now on to 64 South Shore Drive. Request for a COC DEP file number 300-1020. Um, uh, yep, so request for certificate of compliance. This is a project that's been completed for a couple years. It included the removal of a failed um, shoreline timber retaining wall with a setback kind of very cobble stone shoreline wall, which is better for habitat, et cetera. Um, it also included a uh, replacement um, of stairways and some decks in that area, as well as landscape planting. Uh, we received the engineer's um, letter of substantial compliance. I've been out there. I was out there when it was finished, and I went back out and looked at it again. Everything looks good um, and is consistent with the plan. I would recommend um, issuance of the certificate of compliance, a complete one, with the perpetual conditions noted in the order of condition, which was special conditions 41 through 45, which were general perpetual conditions. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, do I have a recommendation? Motion? Um, I'll make a motion that um, we agreed to a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 1020, which is at 64 South Shore Drive. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. All right. Administrative decisions. The clerk and the agent want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> so we had reorganization of the board for fiscal year 22 on here. Um, I'm game for whatever anybody wants to do. I, I was hoping we would wait till we had our next member before we made a change, but I'd be glad to. Uh, Make a change now if you guys want to. Well, we're first of all, I, I don't think we're going to make a change for a new person coming on the board because there is a learning curve, as Eric had learned. Oh, what do you mean? Eric came in like a bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I just know a couple of more things. Yeah. Still a bull. <laughs> no, but I, I seriously don't think that a newcomer would be liable to be willing to take over the job of chair. But his vote might change who the chair is or whatever. Oh, I don't care. True. And also, too, we do have the um, the liaison positions and the um, right. other board positions, too. Right. So maybe, you know, the next meeting is in five weeks. Maybe 
There might be someone who has. I have a candidate who's a mistake about Okay. Sounds good. Let's yep. table it till the next. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Next meeting. Yep. Good. And if Thanks you think that, that Eric is giving up his lucrative job with the lace committee, you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have an update. This <laughs> meeting. What? <laughs> there is a meeting no scheduled for this Thursday, 6:30, I believe, here. Oh so God. I think I'm gonna go. I, I, I checked and I saw you were included. I on was that email, on the so, email this yeah. time, more than three and a half hours before the meeting. All right. I, don't know. I, I, it's, I got the agenda yes. So have we agreed we're going to wait till the next meeting to yep. bring, put that back on the agenda for the next meeting? Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Any old business up, Becky? Yeah, there's two pieces of old business that we should talk about briefly, Becky. Uh, we have two court cases that we'd like to have an update on. The first one is when is a 508 court case? It's been postponed, 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 postponed. Yep. Uh, so for the 508 one, um, at the one of the last meetings, I don't think it was last meeting, sorry, I don't have the date in front of me. Um, that was for the, we have two projects with them. That was for the 27 Lad Road. Yep. Um, you did vote to release the enforcement order for that. So with the release of the enforcement order, um, the uh, town council was going to um, move to remove the court case as well um, because they addressed the enforcement order um, to your standards. So, so that's no longer an issue. Correct. Okay. Okay. And the RV center. Uh, still, still working on that with um, town council. Okay. What is our present position? Uh, Probably something you ought to talk about in the executive session. Yeah. yeah. Probably a good point. Or just get back to the questions. So, if we, well, wasn't there a 60-day period, though, Jeff? Well, I believe that the, the, board's, the board's decision is where the attorney is going. Yeah, let's put that on executive session right now. We'll put it on for the next meeting. Just for an update? Okay. Yeah, for an update. I don't, I don't want to uh, talk about it. In the sure. Beg your pardon? Would you like to have the beginning? Or at the end? Yeah, that's a good question. Would you like to start before our... <laughs> yeah. Right, because right, we're scheduled. So we could make it at six yeah. thirty, so we can go home after. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine by me. <laughs> right, we can set them. Yeah. Or we can do it at the end. Um, the if it's just the worked, board. The beginning worked well for us, didn't it? We you did it before our normal start yeah. time. Yeah. So yeah, that's up to you. But right, you, you, you can decide. Five um, no. No. Stephen, can you do that? No, we don't need an hour to yeah. talk about five thirty. What can can we just do it at the end of the meeting? I mean, just if it's or why don't we just right. uh, do it at six have to, and start have the public hearings at, at like six fifteen? Okay. And if we, we can't right. Start we don't, later than that. It's not the end of yeah. the world. We can do that because we don't have um, we haven't given people times yet for right. new right. things that have come yeah, in. So, so fine, make it yeah. at six. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it'll be quick Good. anyways. Yeah. All right. All right. Easy peasy. That's all I had for old business. Okay. Let's let's get the Lakes Advisory. So there is a, a Lakes Advisory Committee meeting on August 19th, 6.30 at Town Hall. Okay. So, uh, so, so much as to where that's going to be, Jeff, I have no idea. Oh, it's going to be over there? All right. Good. Now I know where to go. Uh, CPA, I don't know. I don't know when. Seven o'clock trails. Yeah. yeah. Well, looking at this agenda, there's no way it's going to last 30 minutes. So <laughs> we'll be out for you, yeah. Trails. Meeting. CPA, um, we haven't had one. There are a couple of questions as to when we're going to have one. I haven't talked to Penny. Okay, I, I haven't heard from yeah. Penny either yeah. when I asked. Yeah. Um, open space. Thursday night, seven o'clock, in competition with Eric. <laughs> 
trails? Four, oh, four o'clock. Four o'clock is seven. Open space is four. Slack is 6.30. Busy, busy. What day is this? Thursday. Ah, damn. Yeah. Approval of meeting minutes. I got all those As meetings. I think I'm going to find Altman and take him out for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Agents report anything, Becky? Just a couple quick things. Um, DOT Cedar Lake project with the turnpike that we've been working on, they're out there doing the, the swale work on the long swale coming down, making some good progress. Um, Raul and Jim have been going out there a lot, which is very helpful checking in on it. They are moving across the street to Hamilton um, Road to do that right after this. Um, so looks like, knock on wood, that it'll be done this year. So that's um, that's been good. our longest ongoing in enforcement order since I've been here. Um, so that's good. But they would like to come. Raul wants to come to the next meeting and give you a um, um, hands-on update. So right. they'll be coming the next meeting. We should put it on the... Um site visit then prior to that sure yeah i'm actually i just scheduled a, a site visit myself to go out with them but we can go out on our tuesday site visit if you yeah, want to for, to look at it sure yeah yeah um, write that down before i forget uh, just to let you know, one of the conservation properties, um, South Seven Allen Road, which is adjacent to the Plimpton property, I had just received a, a notification from someone in the public that they were concerned that the um, adjacent property owner had gone onto the town's property and done some clearing out there. I have met with the property owner, um, and they're going to work to address that. Um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. So there's just some... Um, On Allen they, Road? Yeah, the, most of it looks like they did clearing on their property and kind of the contractor pushed things um, onto our property. He said he had advised them not to do it and they did it. But um, we, we went over a plan. I asked him to submit something in writing how he'll plan to address um, clean, cleaning that up. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, Hobbs Brook, our retaining wall down there. I met out there today to go over the planting plan. Um, um, it's changed a little bit because the wall and they put the wire mesh netting over the wall. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It had to go up and over about five or six feet over the top of the wall and then they had to put the chain link fence behind that. So some of the planting that um, we had planting on the top there, we actually um, it went out there and you know with the pine trees there and the vegetation that's already kind of grown back under the wire mesh really doesn't make sense to put those plants there. They're not going to survive and they're not needed. Um, so we actually worked um, in our revising that to take all those plantings, um, add them into where we required the planting in the front of the wall, um, and the, along that access road, which we didn't have replacement plantings for. So um, they should be getting that done, hopefully, you know, the next two or three weeks. So good. Why don't yep. they plant English ivy so that it covers up that fence? I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stuff growing up there already. It's invasive. So. It came in from England. So, thank you. Yeah, there are occasions when you should bite your thank tongue. Thank you for that update. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. It's nice that it's, you know, see those planting plants yeah. get completed. Good. Uh, I went out also today, um, pick a road, um, check in over there. They're getting the, the culvert crossing installed. So, okay. Good. Anything else? Uh, nothing. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in her four weeks over her um, summer break from college, and was like an amazing assistant for a project we're working on um, refiling all of our DEP file numbers by address. So they're a lot easier to find when someone calls and says, Do you have something on Pine Elm Road? Oh, wow. And we actually brought in some National Honor Society students, and she, you know, led them helping too. And mm -hmm. She was a very nice asset to our department. Yeah, oh, and that's Linda who was here um, last school year with us, except for when COVID started. So she was nice enough to come back over the summer and and help us. So, and we may see her again hopefully. So she's just happy to get any experience. Um, you know, I brought her out again in the field, not as much as I did before, but. Um, 
but it's also it's not just the the DEP file numbers it's all the SCC numbers going back from the beginning of time that we can't find that's not you know electronically saved anywhere so all of that um, you know when someone has a question about any property emergency authorizations enforcement orders anything um, will be much easier to find so better awesome. for us better for the public big project though big project, big project. You know, Ed takes that phrase that you just used about from the beginning of time really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my if you're God. pointing at him, he should be pointing at you. <laughs> Even I can sit off the back. <laughs> yeah, right. Actually, I'm just propped up by Stephen. <laughs> we, we all sat back here? Well, I just don't know if there... Are you here for anything or just... Okay, okay, I just wanted to make sure I knew that yep. we had some people in the audience. So. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. Discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, guys, I let you down. We got it done in under two hours, though. Ooh, it's so, yes. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, it, yeah that, that's the first one. Yeah, that's the first one.